DSP tries it. All right, hello everyone. Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to the 100th episode of DSP tries it. And wow, first of all, I can't even believe that anything that I've done really has hit 100 episodes. In fact, I think the only other thing that has is the Hateful Truth game reviews because I play so many games every year and I review a bunch that that's gotten quite a lot of episodes as well. But, man, did I ever think way back before I ever had even tried to monetize any of my videos that a simple series of me trying out a food item or a silly product here or there would turn into something that would have hundreds of episodes and go on for over five years? No, I did not. But I just want to say at this point, thank you, thank you, thank you. For those of you who used to watch the old school DSP tries it and have stuck with it, for those of you who have checked out my vlogging content only recently and have jumped onto the DSP tries it, you know, bandwagon uh, and enjoy, really enjoyed that series, I never thought that a, a series of me just trying a little food item or, you know, a controller, or, you know, any kind of a little gadget, or a little doodad, or anything like that, would turn out to be over five years long and 100 episodes and still be successful to this day. That's a pretty awesome thing. Anything that hits 100 episodes, it means a few things. It means that, number one, obviously it's successful. Number two, that it's popular. And that basically there is a demand for it, and it's something that is quality. So, I... Am very pleased to be putting out the 100th episode of DSP Tries It for you today. You know, you might not realize this, reminiscing a little bit, I was thinking about a lot of the vlogging series that I've started, and DSP Tries It, you may not realize this, actually just started as a very silly thing because way back when, we're talking the old days of YouTube, 2008 to 2010, before I ever monetized any videos, you were not able to monetize gameplay videos. Even if you were doing a Let's Play or a playthrough with commentary or whatever, YouTube would refuse to put ads on those videos saying that, oh, well, we believe that video games could potentially have lawsuits against them for third-party content, and therefore we won't monetize those. So, you know, I did YouTube videos of gaming for over two years, and then... It kind of occurred to me that if I were to branch out a little bit and do some other series, that maybe I could make a little bit of extra money on the side to help pay for my hobby, which was the gaming. And so I opened up a, a channel on YouTube called The King of Hate HD, which was my HD. I bought an HD camera to film it um, and to do little vlogging, whether it was me going on trips, whether it was the series such as DSP Tries It and other vlogging series as well, such as channel updates and the weekend preview and reviews and all kinds of stuff that I've uh, begun to do. Ask the King, right? My monthly Q&A session. All those series found their homes on my vlogging channel. And incidentally, I actually made just a little bit of money for the few months that that channel existed in that form. And then later, if you remember later on in 2010, I got laid off from my full-time job, which was an office job. And then people just flocked to my stuff because they wanted to see me succeed. They knew I, they, I couldn't make any money on the gaming video, so they watched the hell out of the vlogs. And that's when YouTube decided to say that I was abusing uh, through, through illegal click activity, which I obviously did not perform, but that I was somehow abusing by clicking my own videos or something and kicked me out of the ad program. And then I said, you know what, even, even if I cannot make a lot of money or I can't make any money on my vlogging videos, I want to keep doing them because I found there was a new audience. Even though there were people that, the majority of people who watch my content want to see me play games or talk about games or review games, there are thousands of people who enjoy just watching me in a vlog style video like this one. And so I said, wow, this is cool. It's diversification. I can have one channel where I do all my gameplay and another channel where you have me do other kinds of of stuff and that's kind of what's happened since 2010 is my 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 whole existence on YouTube kind of evolved you've got Phil the person and then you got Phil the gamer and they are kind of two separate things when it comes to when you're looking at my channel layouts on YouTube so after you know a hundred episodes it's like geez where else can the series go from here and let me tell you uh, I'm happy that a year ago when I moved to the state of Washington that we have so many opportunities for things such as food and restaurants and stuff in this area to try stuff at the same time, it's a little disappointing, and the reason that I say that is uh, I know that when I started DSP Tries, it was kind of a silly series where I would try different gadgets and products and gizmos and stuff, and the reason that I could do that back then is because I had a lot of disposable income. I was a single guy. I was living in this little condo in Connecticut, and I was bringing in YouTube money uh, without any kind of real major uh, financial responsibilities at the time. 
And so I was like, wow, I got all this excess money this month. I'll just go blow it on some silly website like thinkgeek.com and I'd order these stupid caffeine-infused marshmallows, right? Remember, that was one of the first episodes of DSP Tries it ever was the Stay Puffed Marshmallows, I remember. And that's the kind of stuff that's gone by the wayside. I don't have that kind of disposable income anymore. All my money goes towards the bills now. So it's not like I'm the, the five, six years ago, the old younger Phil who had all this money to throw around. He could buy all this junk and do it on DSP Tries it. But at least as often as I can, I try to try new food items. I do try to try out different things. Uh, when I get a chance and when I do try a new gadget or something, I do a DSP tries it. Or if it's not a DSP tries it, it's at least some kind of a special vlog that I put out. And I hope that you enjoy that content. Now, in particular, to celebrate the 100th episode of DSP tries it, I was looking for something like, wow, it'll blow you away and something totally crazy and zany. And I had one idea, and it kind of fell through. It didn't work out too well when I actually got around to doing it. And I was like, man, that wouldn't be good for the 100th episode. So what I decided is to do a double episode. What you're about to see after me talking here are two editions of DSP Tries It that were filmed at separate times. All right? It is two food items, FYI. One is a more traditional fast foodie item that you would find at your local fast food chain. Not going to spoil yet. The other one is a local uh, chain that's only in this area of the country. So you're going to get local flavor, which I used to do back in Connecticut. Remember when I used to review Duchess and stuff like that? You're going to get one like that, and you're going to get one that's more of a major chain. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I want to say thank you so much for your ongoing support all of these years. 100 episodes is an awesome thing to celebrate. I feel great. I'm looking forward to doing many more episodes of DSP Tries It in the future, right? You can only go up from here. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And without further ado, let's get in to the latest and biggest ever episode of DSP Tries It. Enjoy, everyone. Hello, everyone. DSP here, and welcome to a new edition of DSP Tries It. And this one, I'll be honest, is kind of unique because since we moved to the state of Washington in mid-2014, we really haven't gone to McDonald's that much. As you know, we've kind of avoided it. There's a lot of other better food options out here. Even when it comes to just unhealthy fast food, there's a lot of better food options out here in our opinion. Now, it's funny because McDonald's, for anyone who's been following along the company, has reported that for the past two years, they've been having some big problems. Sales are low. And franchisees are wondering what the hell they can do uh, to save the company because they're starting to bleed a little bit of money. Their profits are going down and down and down every year. And McDonald's has tried many different efforts over this past year. Number one, they tried a sirloin burger. They had three varieties of this burger, which Leanna and I tried. And we both of us said, eh, it's okay, but I wouldn't go specifically to McDonald's to get this burger. In fact, I thought that their current clubhouse burger is better. Guess what? Sirloin burgers discontinued, gone. Then they announced a new grilled style chicken sandwich that was supposed to use all fresh ingredients. And we tried that and it was the worst chicken sandwich that I've had at a fast food place. Artisan pretty much, my ass. yeah, artisan chicken. It was a tiny dry chicken breast with lettuce, tomato, nothing. It was terrible. So we've heard all this, and that's gone by the way too. You can't get that anymore, that's gone. So, you know, following along the news, just the other day we were actually watching some regular television, which we usually don't do. Usually we watch TV on demand, so we skip a lot of ads. And we were watching normal television live, and there was an ad for a new thing at McDonald's, the Buttermilk Crispy Chicken Sandwich. And I said to myself, that's funny, because that sounds to me, at least what they showed in the commercial, looked like McDonald's old premium chicken sandwich that they actually launched in the mid-2000s. They had three varieties of it. One was like chicken, bacon, ranch. One was like a classic with mayo, lettuce, tomato. And they did away with it a few years ago. And I actually remember the moment when this happened. It was a summer campaign they had, and they wanted to do a whole new summer lineup of foods. So they had the sweet southern tea. And to go with that, they had a southern chicken sandwich, which was this really like sweet batter sandwich, but it was very greasy. And I had it once. I did not like it. And I never wanted to eat it again, but then what McDonald's did, they changed all of their crispy chicken to that southern style crispy chicken. I said, what are they thinking? I hated it. And I, since then, I have not gotten a, crispy, a, a chicken sandwich, crispy chicken sandwich from McDonald's. So we saw this ad the other day, and they show it, and the guys in the commercial, the best sandwich I've ever seen. It's the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. And I said, I got to try this sandwich, because with the way McDonald's has been going, every new effort they try is terrible. 
And now it seems to me like they're going back to basics, right? They're going back to their old crispy chicken style after all these years. So here it is. I'm curious to see what this is. Let's open it first of all. Here we go. Uh, I think someone missed. <laughs> it's not even, look. Oh my God. It's not even like securely on the bun. <laughs> As you can see, the piece of chicken is quite large. Uh, that does not look like buttermilk chicken. That really doesn't to me. You know what that looks like? The old chicken. That doesn't look like buttermilk chicken. And they don't even sell the old one anymore from what I'm to understand. Buttermilk chicken is supposed to be more yellowish. It's supposed to be uh, a thicker batter that's crispy and actually has a certain flavoring to it. This looks like the old chicken. But this is what they gave me. Look, in the box, buttermilk crispy chicken. All right, so it's on some kind of a special kind of bun. Oh, Leanna got a picture. Here, look. It looks way lighter in the picture at Here, least. Here, let's compare. What it's supposed to be, what it actually looks like. All right, maybe it's not too far off. All right, we'll give it that. Maybe it is the right sandwich. Uh, you got lettuce, mayo, obviously, a single slice of tomato, and here's your buttermilk chicken. It's pretty big, but it doesn't fit on the bun at all. So I'm gonna have to like rearrange this thing and see if it fits. All right, well, I'm gonna actually try it and I'll stop looking at it and actually taste it. Cause who knows, maybe it's all in the flavoring, right? It could be that it tastes really good. It just didn't really fit nicely on the bun. From uh -huh. the pictures I see, they all are oversized for the bun. I prefer a sandwich with things that are kind of settled into it, but all right. So here we go. Lettuce, tomato, mayo, and this sweetened... By the way, see, you see the sweetened bun? See they do? They butter them now and they like fry them up or whatever on the grill. All right, let's see what this is like. Mmm. Mmm. See, that was interesting because I got a bite of everything perfectly. I can tell you right now. Chicken, very crispy, juicy on the inside, has a good flavor to it. Unlike the other chicken sandwich we had, not dried out, substantial, right? It's enough. It fills more than it fills the bun, which is what you're looking for when you're going to get a sandwich for your meal. It's pretty good. What I want to do, I want to just try the chicken because I think I have, you know, flavorings of everything else. I want to just see just the chicken, because this is the major change. Let's see what just the chicken tastes like. Mmm. You know what that tastes like? The old fried chicken. That's exactly, I'm kidding, not kidding you. It looks different. It tastes like the old chicken. It tastes like the old McDonald's chicken sandwiches that I used to have years ago. We're talking 10 plus years ago. That's what it used to be like. So eventually, I guess what they realized was all the flaky shit they did over the past 10 years isn't cutting it. Let's go back to the stuff that used to sell. All right, let me take another bite. Whoa. A ton of mayo. Jesus. I don't necessarily think it's too much. I think they put it all in one spot. So when I bit there, it all looks like exploded out onto my hands. I'll take one more bite and I'll give you a verdict. Hmm. All right. So. Quite honestly here, the new, even though they're nearly not new, the new buttermilk chicken sandwich at McDonald's is probably the best chicken sandwich at McDonald's that I've had in a decade. No lie, since they changed the old formula. It's not exactly what I remember. Maybe it's just nostalgia in my head of the old sandwiches I used to have that I like more. But I like it. I think... Quite honestly, for a combo that's $7, it's this plus fries, 
and a drink is $7 right now that I'm expecting more than just lettuce, tomato, mayo. You know what I mean? Like, where is the, uh, making ranch with bacon, right? Or some kind of a cheese or something. For just a chicken sandwich for that much money, I'm expecting more. It tastes good, don't get me wrong. And this is probably the size of two to three McChicken sandwiches, their little dollar chicken sandwich. But is it blowing me away? Absolutely not. I've had tons of better chicken sandwiches in my life. And I love watching that fucking commercial I saw. This is the best sandwich I've ever had. Like, well, you probably have one other sandwich. It was their older shit chicken sandwich that everyone hated and they don't have anymore. Because, yes, this is infinitely better than that one, but it's nothing to write home about. And it's good. It's a good, it's a step in the right direction. If they can make consistently good food like how they had that people liked and stop changing it to crap, then I think they'll get back to where they were. But right now, this is a step in the right direction, but it needs a little more. I would like... If this succeeds, right, if this is good and it does well, then by the end of the year, do variations. Like I said, do a, a chicken, uh, bacon, ranch version of it. Do one with maybe some hot sauce, right? You can do a buffalo or something like that. Then, if you have a variation on it, then you could actually, be, I think, make it a little bit better. This, for me, I want something different. I want something that kicks it up a notch. This is very basic. But for what it is, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. And I know some people might say that's kind of high. But remember, their other chicken sandwich was terrible, and the things they've been doing recently just were not very good. This is better than their everything else there that we had recently. It's probably, if you're going to get chicken, I would get this. If you're going to get a burger, get their bacon clubhouse. Those are the two that I would highly recommend right now. Um, and we'll see what happens if it's success successful and McDonald's can kind of turn it around and get more people to buy it. All right? But buttermilk chicken sandwich, not bad, not great. Check it out. If you wanted some chicken, you hated the other stuff they had. It's much better than what it was, but it also doesn't blow me away. I think they could definitely do something to make it better. All right. That's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. DSP tries it. I'll see you in a few months if McDonald's still, you know, is trying new stuff, and we'll see if they follow through or not. All right. Peace out. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of DSP tries it. And yeah, this is going to be a really different one because it is. Something that is local to us, there's a fast food chain out here in Washington called Skippers that is seafood, as you can see, and they're actually well known for their chowder. They have their own brand of chowder that they actually offer in their stores. I guess you can buy it in cans and stuff too, but they also have chains around this area, which is fried seafood, fried shrimp, fried clams, and I don't know what kind of fish this even is, but this is considered their kind of everything basket. This is called the Skipper's Basket. Leanna actually got one too. Mm -hmm. We've lived here for a year, and no lie, Skipper's is like right down the street from us, but we've never tried them. For whatever reason, we've always, oh, we'll try the chains we know, you know what I mean? And we never really ventured out. Today we said, you know what, today we'll be a little different. Today we're gonna try a chain we've never had before. So to show you what it comes with, Skipper's Basket, you get a bunch of these fried shrimp, French fries, this fried fish, you get clam, clam strips, you get a side of their clam chowder, and you get a little bit of coleslaw, not too much, a tiny little bit, and of course, cocktail sauce for the shrimp and tartar sauce for the fish and the clams. So we're gonna try it, we're gonna see if we like it or not. Go ahead, try a clam. Sounds crispy. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to start, since this is supposed to be their big thing, I'm going to try their chowder. Now, just to let you know, this combo is the most expensive combo they have because it's everything. You know what I mean? It's a little bit of everything possible at the store. You can just get shrimp. You could just get clam strips. You could just get the fish and chips for much cheaper. But we decided to try out everything because you said, hey, you know, if you're going to go there for the first time, try everything and see what you like. Uh, the combo was $11.98, so $12. Pretty expensive, but it's a ton of food, too. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to try the chowder. I'm going to see what the chowder is like. First of all, to show you, it's thick. A thick chowder. And it looks like it has a lot of ingredients in it. I see some veggies, things like that in there. All right, let's give it a taste. So this would be considered the New England clam chowder, the white. Mmm. That is pretty good. Mmm. Is it the best chowder I've ever had? No. But for a fast food place, that's pretty good. And this would be perfect in a cold winter's day. It just happens to be we're doing this during the summer. But a cold day, that would really warm me up and that would be pretty good. So thumbs up to the chowder for me. I'm gonna try the coleslaw. 
try a little bit of everything in here. Coleslaw can be hit or miss. Let's see how theirs is. Eh. Very bland. As I suspected. Sometimes coleslaw can have like a vinegary kick or sweetness to it. Not really. It's very bland. Yeah. So pretty typical. I don't think anyone's going there for the coleslaw anyway. Hmm. Here, you try something now. Try something. I already did. You had the clam. What did you think? It was very chewy. Mm -hmm. Very chewy. Okay, having another clam. Eh. Yeah. Not great. It's not amazing, but is it horrible? No. No. Okay. Yeah, you, you can try your chowder. I'll try one of these shrimp here. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to open my cocktail sauce. I'll actually dip it in the cocktail sauce and give it a taste. They're very small, by the way. I mean, no lie here. It's, really, it's a bite-sized shrimp. It's certainly not a full giant shrimp you would get at, like, a real seafood restaurant. This is fast food we're talking about. It took them about 10 minutes to make this whole thing. It was fresh, too. You can see they were cooking it fresh. It's very warm. So none of this is pre-made. They make it to order. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Not bad. Hmm. Not bad, but I'll be honest. You taste more of the breading than the shrimp itself. Probably because this is fast food, I would assume this is all frozen. You know, and they make it from frozen so it loses some of its flavor. It's not bad, but it's certainly not great. I'll try another one. The tartar sauce is very tangy. Does not have any spice to it at all. Some tartar sauces are very spicy. This one has no spice at all, probably because it's, it's, they wanted it. No, no one's going to complain, you know, that it's too hot. So. Mm. Not bad. I like that it's very crispy. It's not soggy. That means they definitely cooked it right. But again, like I said, not too much flavor. All right, I'm going to open up the tartar sauce, and then I'm going to try the clams. Greasy though, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. As to expect for fried foods like this. Mm. So I'm gonna try the clams. And again, not fresh, as you can see. You can tell it's definitely frozen. Mm -hmm. That's what I first tried. Oh, well, came off my fork now. Not bad, not amazing. I've had clams like this before. It's not a fresh clam strip, that's for sure. But it's not bad. The tartar sauce, as I expected again. Mild, not overwhelming with flavor. They probably want to go more safe than sorry. Um, the one thing that's a little annoying that I'm noticing now. So here's the utensils they give you, right? How exactly am I going to cut into this piece of fish? Like this, I guess? Just rip it? Just rip it, rip I guess. Rip a chunk off. Hmm. Not bad. So it's not bad. It's a lot of food. That's why it's 12 bucks. Look how many clam strips I have. This is going to take a while to eat because there's a lot of food here. Nothing is overwhelmingly jumping out at me and saying it's delicious. At the same time, where else can you get fast food like this? You know, where there's no real change when you think about it. Where can I go to get stuff? I was at Long John Silver's is one. I've never actually had Long John Silver's before. There's never been one near me. And uh, the other one, I guess, would be Ivar's, which is also out here, incidentally, just not near us. So we've never had, like, the fast food Ivar's before. So, here, I'll try a, a fry. looks pretty typical, right? Yeah, I just tried one that's bland. bland as fuck. Not even any salt on it. Yeah, there's nothing. It's completely plain. No mm. salt, no pepper, nothing. Now, they have other things at Skippers. They have things like grilled fish, like salmon and other kinds of fish, salmon burgers, stuff like that. So, it's not like you're stuck having to get fried food. But obviously, this is like the attraction. This is the reason why you would go there. And the chowder, of course. I'll be honest. Out of everything here, I think the chowder tastes the best. The chowder actually has more flavor 
doesn't actually taste like it's a frozen, you know what I mean? Like everything else you could tell it was frozen and they fried it up quick versus this actually is full of flavor. Mmm. So, I gotta judge this individually and a group. Individually, chowder's great. All this fried food, eh. It's kind of like not bad, but not great. The fries are bland, okay? But the amount of food you get for 12 bucks, this is huge, this is a giant meal, is really good. Especially when you go to most fast food places, their combos are almost 10 bucks now for a sandwich and a little bit of fries and a soda. Here you're getting a drink. Look, you're getting coleslaw, this, this, is gonna fill the hell out of you for 12 bucks. So the value is there, but it's not amazing high quality food. If you're gonna go to a seafood restaurant to eat something like this, you're probably gonna pay for this much, probably like $20 or more. So it's about half price what you expect in a fancy restaurant, but the quality of the food's on par. I'm just gonna give it a three out of five. I'm gonna give it a three out of five because I think it's around average, but I'm gonna say because of the flavor of the chowder being pretty good, I'm gonna actually think to say it's pretty good. And in the winter, this would probably be something that if it's a cold winter's day, I'd wanna go get some nice fr uh, fried seafood. Probably not something for every day, especially with the amount of fried breading in here, but it's pretty good and for the quality it sounds. So what do you think? Here, I'll take the camera back. Yeah, it gets a two from me. A two out of five. It is pretty expensive. Oh. Yes, you get a lot, but it's still pretty expensive. It's definitely not fresh. How you can make a, a French fry so bland. It's very bland. It's like, <laughs> it tastes like, you can just taste only the texture. Like there's yeah. no actual flavor. The chowder is not bad, but Am I going to go there for the chowder or am I going to go to Fred Meyer across the street and buy it? That's true too. When there's a grocery store near yeah, you. There's yeah. literally right across the Freshly street. Freshly made so it's stuff. Like, nothing here says, yeah, I have to go You have back. to go to Skipper's, especially, right. Especially since we're all on the coast where we can get right. plenty of seafood restaurants. There's lots of high quality. Of course, they're more expensive, but there's yeah. high quality seafood restaurants out here where yeah. we could get it, similar it stuff. It could be worse, but it also could be better. In so. a jam, if you have a craving for seafood, I could see you running out yeah. and going to Skipper's. But outside of that, I don't think you're going to really go out of your way. No, you know what I mean? Definitely not. All right, so that is it for the Skipper's. Uh, it's actually called the Skipper's Basket Seafood Combo. Hope you enjoyed the review. And if you are near a Skipper's and you're looking for fried seafood, it's a quick alternative to going to a uh, more expensive and time-consuming restaurant. So that is it for DSP Tries It, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.